this is the wanderer above the sea of fog. As I'm uploading this video on St Valentine's Day, I thought it'd be fitting to cover probably the most famous Romantic era painting of all time, painted in 1818 by German artist Caspar David Friedrich, who looks like he's heard just one too many comments about his bold choice of facial hair. And the first thing you probably notice about it is, well it's not particularly romantic. So that brings us to the question, what was the Romantic era? At its height from around 1800 to 1850, it was not just an artistic movement, but also a literary, musical and intellectual one, giving us such ones as Edgar Allan Poe, Ludwig van Beethoven, Jane Austen, Frederick Chopin and loads more. It was a reaction to the previous Enlightenment movement, which centred around logic, rationality and order. The Romantic movement instead focused on individuality, nature and most of all, emotion and they weren't always good, positive, happy emotions. As Friedrich himself said, The painter shall not paint what he sees in front of him, but what he sees inside himself. I'm not sure what that says about the guy who painted this. This. Or this. I mean, if this is what he saw inside of himself, he was not a happy chappy. Unfortunately, Friedrich had to learn to deal with tragedy early in life, losing his mother and several siblings while he was still very young, including at the age of 13 seeing his brother drown after he'd fallen through the ice on a frozen lake. Unsurprisingly, even at a young age he was known to be melancholic and he suffered many bouts of depression throughout his life, and you do certainly feel that in a lot of his work. Friedrich was born in Swedish Pomerania, which sounds like a small yappy dog you need to assemble yourself, in what would now be considered North East Germany. Now the Germans aren't exactly synonymous with art, though they are famous for a lot of other things. Great beer, making quality cars, being annoyingly good at football, and losing world wars. In fact, another owner of questionable facial hair was a big fan of his paintings and wanted to associate them with his own movement, the Nazi movement. The Nazi slogan, Blood and Soil, was designed to glorify the German country, and they were big fans of using landscape paintings to drive pride and nationalism. They saw Friedrich's works embodying exactly the image they were trying to promote, and used them for their own propaganda. After the Second World War, this actually led to Friedrich's works becoming less fashionable, as some people associated his work with Nazism, even though he obviously never had any link with it at all. The Wonder Above the Sea of Fog was also the inspiration for black metal band Wolves in the Throne Room's 2009 song of the same name, which is actually pretty good if you're into that sort of thing. Now I'm not sure how aware most viewers will be of the black metal scene, but romance is not generally a common topic in the genre. Other songs in the band's back catalogue include Vastness and Sorrow, I'll Lay My Bones Among the Rocks and Roots, Astral Blood, and The Looming Resonance. So it's safe to say, you're pretty unlikely to confuse them with Celine Dion. One of the things that makes The Wanderer stand out is the unusual choice to portray the main character facing away from the viewer. This was something Friedrich was often known for, usually painting vast landscapes featuring just small silhouettes of people, often viewed from behind, which a lot of experts interpret as signifying the characters being in a state of contemplation of nature, how vast and often scary it can be but after a while you start to think maybe she wasn't good at painting faces. As landscape paintings go, it's quite unlandscapey. First of all, it's literally presented in portrait orientation, but also despite the fact the majority of the canvas is taken up by the wonderful scenery, everything draws the view to the main character, which really sends out quite mixed messages to the viewer. As for that main character, we really don't know who he is. Some people think it may be based on Friedrich himself, Probably the most popular opinions is based on Colonel Friedrich Gotthard von Brinken, a member of the Saxon infantry who fought against Napoleon. Brinken had died only a few years before Friedrich painted this, so there's a theory it may be a tribute to him. Around the time of this painting, Friedrich married Caroline Bommer in Dresden. Now, as an Englishman, I feel almost obligated to make a Bommer in Dresden joke, but I'm not going to. It would just be going to Führer. I mean, far. And for a short time afterwards, his paintings took on a brighter palette, often featuring more human figures, and the figures themselves were often larger and more prominent. 
Unfortunately, in Friedrich's later life, his work faded from popularity, his art being seen as outdated, and people viewed him as an eccentric and distant character. In 1835, he suffered a stroke which severely limited his ability to paint, and he lived his later years in poverty before he died in obscurity as a recluse. So despite being probably the most famous romantic painter of all time, this is a painting about how vast and overwhelming nature can be. It may actually be a tribute to a dead general, painted by a melancholy misanthrope who died in poverty and which was later appropriated by black metal music and the sodding Nazis. Happy Valentine's Day, folks. Thanks for watching my video, I upload on the second Sunday of every month. Feel free to like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed it. Thanks.